Expected value, or EV, as we know it in the poker world, refers to the long-term average profit or loss that you expect from a specific decision in poker. To start understanding EV in more depth, you, we should start with the normal distribution. You may remember it from school as the bell curve distribution. It's got a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Now, if that confuses you, don't worry. I'm going to put it in poker terms now. Uh, this line in the middle, which is normally zero, we'll call this your EV. And the green line across the top, it tells you how often you observe that outcome over infinite trials. So let's say we do a million, we run a specific hand decision. Let's say an all-in call in the flop. We run it out a million times. How often out of that million do you hit, do you hit this number in the middle? How often do you hit it out here? You notice the frequency out here at the edge is lower than the frequency in the middle. So out here, we'd actually say this is like getting sucked out. Maybe 5% of the time you get sucked out. Extreme bad luck. And maybe on the other side, same amount of time, 5%, you, uh, you suck somebody else out. Extreme good luck. But the majority of the outcomes are clustered around what you would expect. They're, they're close to your expected value. This is the normal distribution, and it actually it happens all over nature, all over science, but very little in poker. Uh, it's a low variance distribution clustered around the mean. Let's take a look now at some poker distributions that are quite common and should show how high variance is in individual hands in poker. First, a common situation where your EV is zero. You're calling an all-in bet with a flush draw on the flop. So you're going to hit your flush by the river 33.3% .3 of the time. The other 66.6% you're not going to improve, you're going to lose the pot. You're going to actually lose your pot-sized call. When you hit your flush, you're going to win what was in the pot in your opponent's all-in bet, plus two pot. These average out uh, in the long run to zero. If you don't understand how they average out, watch our video on pot odds and hand equity. So. Even though our EV is zero, we actually can't ever get zero in an individual trial. Let's say a chop's not possible, we're drawing to the nut flush draw. So even if there's a flush on the board, we still win the pot. There's only two outcomes. Win two pot or lose pot. So you can see it's extremely high variance compared to the normal distribution above. Let's go to a second example. One where we're actually plus EV particularly 1.4 times the pot is our expected value. But again, I'll show you, it's high variance. Let's say it's set over set. We have a set of eights and we ran really good. Our opponent has a set of sixes. So we're gonna win this by the river now if we're all in on the flop 80% of the time. He'll suck out on us 20% of the time. And in that case, we'll lose pot minus pot. And when we win, plus two pot. Instead of an EV of zero now, we actually have an EV over here somewhere of 1.4 times the pot. But again, we'll never actually win 1.4 times the pot. We're either winning two pot or we're losing one times the pot. So even when our EV is positive, it can be highly volatile. There can be a high amount of variance. So that's in individual hands, but how do people consistently win money over time? You might see a graph of a good player who's maybe played 100,000 games and his profit cumulative to this point is $150,000. And he may have lost and won a little bit of money along the way, but he's gotten to this point. You could actually redraw his graph based on expected value in all-in pots. So let's say he got all-in and was behind quite often, but for some reason he's just run really good and he keeps overcoming those deficits and 
hitting the perfect turn or river card. If we were to regraph an EV adjusted profit chart for him, it would actually be lower than his observed profit. Conversely, you might have a guy who's getting in a lot of situations all in where he's ahead and he gets sucked out. So his real chart, his real profit, his green profit is actually lower than what he should have been making if everything went fairly. Now, there can be pretty big gaps between expected value and observed value, even, at, even in sample sizes of about 100,000 games. But you can, be, you can rest assured that if you play enough hands, if you play enough sit and goes, enough tournaments, put in enough hours at the tables, and you're always making plus EV decisions, so this is infinite money, this is infinite games along the along the horizontal axis. Your observed profit will start to converge. It'll start to look almost identical to your EV graph. And that's the power of understanding expected value and always striving to make plus EV decisions. Whereas in the short run, in an individual hand level, your variance might be very high. As you go out on the long run to your entire career, if you're making plus EV decisions, you're gonna make money in poker.